So what types of uh, challenges uh, that are we trying to solve with this and what we've seen our customers at, uh, seeing that we're hoping um, that vSphere 7 with Tondu can solve, right? So application modernization. We need infrastructure that can deliver support you can, from being able to run containers, right? Uh, but also have the the operational management, have the, the ability for IT and operations to be able to look into those containerized workloads through familiar tool sets and have uh, robust monitoring and troubleshooting tools to be able to ensure that these services can be delivered uh, in an automated fashion and can be maintained, lifecycle managed and supported reliably, right? We need uh, these to be delivered in a cloud-like way, right? Because we understand the consumers, um, both want to have self-service experiences and the applications themselves need to have automated interfaces uh, to be able to deliver this, the, the demand for allowing the applications to be dynamic, to be able to have elastic growth and scaling and have automated, um, automated uh, in, in, you know, from, from the initial implementation of the application through the dynamic changes that an application might experience through its life cycle, the ability to have automations that support those patterns, right? And we need to not only, you know, offer services, uh, you know, cloud native, quality cloud native services from our own IT infrastructure, we also have to do it, uh, we have to provide a, a system here that can continue the ongoing support of utilization of cloud provider infrastructure and cloud provider services because those are going to be a critical component um, of of IT moving forward right we're not only in the cloud and we're not only uh, on premise and we're not only with one cloud provider and our support system that we use to, to deliver our IT services needs to be uh, built for that we need this and one of the biggest reasons driving you know the the push the rapid push towards this is is uh, in addition to all the new app areas, one of the biggest is really this artificial intelligence and machine learning. Whether it is is keeping your products, uh, you know, uh, current and cutting edge in in their industry, the products that your company makes, right? Or whether it is uh, gathering, you know, analyzing uh, and the business intelligence um, with the dramatic amount of new insights uh, that are capable with artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know, businesses that can execute elegantly, it's like they have a crystal ball that others don't, right? And uh, and so it's a really critical uh, capability and, a, and an amazing opportunity for businesses that can execute on it. But you can't execute with these patterns elegantly with legacy technologies. You need a platform that can run new cloud native technologies, right? Um, data security, so on one hand, you know, one of the things that has slowed container and cloud native adoption for enterprises is making sure that the the container environments had as much security, right? Because on one hand, um, a lot of uh, there's a lot of ways you can deploy containers today and Kubernetes that do not meet enterprise security requirements, right? On the other hand, there's also a, a tremendous amount of new opportunities in cloud native patterns to to solve a lot of so many of the the huge well-known challenges we've had with legacy infrastructure, right? So on one hand, you know, we need to make sure that we can uh, we do this in a way that really does deliver the enterprise capabilities uh, at a minimum. But really, to do this right, we need to to take advantage of the fact that this is new. There's new cloud native patterns. We have so many more new possibilities now to take security to the next level on how we deploy containers. And really that's uh, you know the basis. Uh, these, these are several of the key areas that went into our decisions into bringing um, Tanzu and Kubernetes into vSphere 7. We're seeing new application development patterns from if you're using uh, say Microsoft Visual Studio, and you you get the newest versions, and you go to deploy, you know to build a new app, and you go to do that, you're going to see, you know, all of the the new uh, new templates that they have in there. They're all, they're mostly for container application development, right? And if you're using IntelliJ Studio, if you're using Tomcat, if you're using if you're Java development, if you're C, if you're Scala, regardless of of what tool sets you're you're using, all of these are built. Uh, now for uh, for a more dynamic integration with infrastructure, right? And and so um, uh, historically, you know, 
application developers didn't always get a say, they didn't get a self-service, they didn't get a environment that they could dynamically compose themselves. And that's not just changing because application developers, you know, want to be spoiled. It's because it's the nature of what we all have to support as businesses to be able to remain competitive, right? To be able to use new generation of technology. And so we we have uh, we see from like this, this example from 451 Research uh, that application development they're starting to take a much more proactive role um, with with trends like continuous integration and continuous deployment. It's really needed to be able to have uh, this type of uh, infrastructure that can satisfy the the, the actual uh, legitimate needs of of uh, the modern developer. I think the most important thing for us here is, you know, while Kubernetes is amazing, um, it's it's maybe even more important that we choose as as an industry on a standard, right? So we can really move forward with confidence that we're not investing in a Betamax. And, and we didn't know that before. You know, a year or two years ago, it wasn't as clear. Um, in, in this race of different container orchestration uh, platforms that have been around, is is Kubernetes going to be the one? And today it's absolutely clear. We see nine, uh, uh, just for example, here on the, the left of the screen, IDC survey showing 97% of respondents are using Kubernetes for to manage their their containerization deployments. Um, and and we we see you know again this need for hybrid. You know we, we while we see. Uh, you know, it's clear the need to use cloud infrastructure and cloud services is is not optional, right? This is a, it's a compelling thing for the modern business. But also a huge um, raise in awareness among our consumer base that we see that wow, uh, we might we we that businesses are seeing a, a really much larger cost than they expected combined with uh, manageability concerns from various teams going out uh, directly to cloud provider infrastructure, right? And and so uh, we see a large movement to to um, one to deploy net new containers on. Uh, on premise, right, uh, as well as uh, for many to bring back certain workloads from from cloud to to run on premise uh, for for both security reasons, cost reasons, etc. Um, there's a desire to do that, right, but you have to have a robust um, a robust infrastructure platform that's able to deliver services at the same level as a cloud provider if you want to have hope to to deploy and manage container instances on your infrastructure, right. So we see. Um, Things like, you know, in 2019, we saw 35% of organizations responding, uh, in, in this case, to this IDC survey uh, that were running containers within a few years over 85. Um, and same thing with ISVs. Even if you're not thinking about your developers developing things, I have to remember if, if, if there's these great new development technologies and you're out paying a lot of money to buy software from, um, you know, commercial off-the-shelf software, uh, ideally it would make sense. I would love for my the software that I'm paying for to come with the latest, greatest capabilities, right? And you think a lot of times now you're paying for software and then you're spending a large amount of money and and, and, and very complex efforts to try to do things like make it automatically deploy and automatically scale through you know, having uh, your own IT staff trying to write a lot of scripts and automations for these. And it's it's incredibly expensive and, and difficult and, and uh, uh, often doesn't work well, right? Well, Kubernetes delivers the capabilities to where an independent software vendor can just out of the box deliver their apps with automated DNS injection, automated firewall uh, rule uh, um, um, delivery that just integrates into your into your infrastructure from the application uh, definition itself, automating the uh, the setup and, and the adjustment of the load balancer as, as the app application may adjust its its own behavior dynamically. Right, It'll just Kubernetes uh, delivers the capability to where when you purchase the same application, same vendor, if it's prepared in that way, you get all of that additional efficiency and automation that can just come with it. So there's a massive, um, massive reason to look at Kubernetes. Even if your app dev, dev teams, you know, maybe they're not concerned with it yet, right? If just from the ability to run and operate applications, the many, the rapidly increasing stream of applications that are coming natively on Kubernetes.